Fans will see a contrast in styles at the K tonight. One flamethrower, one craftsman. One overpowering, one confounding. One strikeout pitcher, one pop-up artist. The Marlins, Jose Fernandez. The Royals, Bruce Chen. Which talent will win out? Find out next. Fans coming early to the K to watch their winning Royals. Tonight it's game two of the series between the Miami Marlins and the Kansas City Royals. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziok. Fans of pitching are really going to enjoy tonight's matchup. You have grizzled old veteran Bruce Chen against young gun Jose Fernandez. One is 36. The other just turned 21. One is throwing in his 376th Major League game. The other in number 23. Joining me tonight is Rex Hudler. And Rex, I've got to ask you the question. What are you looking for out of this matchup? Man, I'm looking for some fooled batters. I'm looking for some solid contact. We're going to see a little bit of both from these guys. Contrasting styles, you got that right, Fizz. Really fun to see what Bruce has done since they inserted him in that starting rotation. Man, he hasn't lost, especially here at the K. He's been really good. 3-0, and and the fans love when, when Bruce pitches. He chews that gum with confidence, but he's been able to speed the bats up and slow them down. Fastballs on the outside part of the plate, and down low. Now, the other kid, Fernandez, ooh, man, cheese at the knees. Opponents hitting under 200 against this young man. He's got a contrasting style of change-ups and breaking balls, but mainly, when you've got that kind of fuzz to your fastball, that's your main pitch. It's a beauty. So, it'll be interesting to see if the Royals can stay hot against this hard flamethrower, and Bruce, get it to the pin to win. It's great to have proud Papa Gordo back in the house at the K. Royals and Marlins coming your way next.
last few days. The latest, Mike Moustakis, who suffered a grade one calf strain last night, rounding third base on the Jason Maxwell, Justin Maxwell triple, and he left the game and is day-to-day. -day. Joel Goldberg back at Kauffman Stadium. The good news on that is that the limp that he had yesterday, not as bad today, so hopefully Mike Moustakis will be back in there soon. They could definitely use him tonight and going forward, but without Moose in there tonight, and a day off for Salvador Perez, 44 games in 44 days. The Royals will need to figure out one of the best young pitchers, as Biz and Hud said, in the major leagues, 21-year-old Jose Fernandez. Jamie Carroll's the only Royal to have seen him in person when he was with the Twins, but he didn't face him that day. Said the key, try to get that pitch count up, run it up a little bit, and grind out at bats. His teammates refer to him as gregarious, young and energetic off the field, polished with the poise of a 35-year-old on the field. He's just 21, but he throws all four pitches, commands them, and knows how to pitch. This will be a huge challenge for the Royals tonight. They are up for it, and Royals baseball is coming up next on Fox Sports Kansas City. Your Kansas City Chevy dealer, the official vehicle of the Kansas City Royals. This game is brought to you in high definition by Time Warner Cable, the official TV, internet, and home phone provider of the Kansas City Royals. It's just another beautiful night in Kansas City for the Marlins and Royals. Manager Mike Redmond's offense is last in almost every category in the major leagues. They are hitting just 229 coming into this affair. Christian Yelich will lead things off. Then Ed Lucas. Giancarlo Stanton has been outstanding. His first two major league seasons down a little bit because of injuries this year. Logan Morrison out of Kansas City will hit fourth. Then the veteran Polanco. The young Solano. Echeverria. Marisnik. And Mathis and Bruce Chen, the 36 year old left hander, will make his sixth start of the year, Rex. The previous five have all been good. I'll say, but you know what? He's really been good at the K this year. 39 innings pitched. He's 3 0 with a 2 3 1 ERA. Only eight walks and 28 strikeouts. That's right. You say, how can a guy that throws 86 max strike out that many guys? Well, it's because of his pitches and the way he sets guys up. Big curves. 
changeups, different arm angles. Really fun to watch Bruce Chin pitch, especially when he's on top of his game like he has been. Five quality starts and as many chances as he moved to 5 and 0 for the second time in his career. Did that in 1999 with the Braves. Yelich knocks one off of George Kataris, knocks his mask off, and Christian goes down in the count, nothing and two. And you could hear that all the way up here. Ooh, man, I'm going to tell you what, look at that. That was quite a shot for George early. Salvador Perez, as you know, coming off the seven day DL concussion list on Sunday. He's just getting the day off. That ball is lined to left field with two strikes on him, so a good at bat for Kristen Yelich. All right, nice to see Alex Gordon out there back on defense in left field for the Royals. Dyson in center field, D low in right. Jamie Carroll, how about this guy? Happy to see him wearing royal blue. Now, he's got a lot of experience on that left side of the infield, but this year, and he's only made two errors. In 60 innings, it's been really good. Excuse me, 60 games. Here is Ed Lucas, former property of the Royals, Kansas City's eighth round draft pick in 2004. Spent a lot of time in the Royals system, but never made it to the big leagues. He's out of Dartmouth. Finally, 31 years young, and this is his rookie season. Okay, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how Bruce does against these young hitters. Okay, young hitters, they don't really care too much about it if a guy's trying to tease you. They go up there and they hack. Good example, first hitter of the game, Yelich. 0-2, Bruce threw him a fastball down the middle. He was on it. These kids are, these young hitters, they may not be, you know, disrupted by their timing with Bruce. We'll see. Their base running skills may be dis disrupted by Bruce. He has a very good move. He picked off an outstanding base runner in Jacoby Ellsbury this past weekend as he started very well that Boston series on a strong note holding the Sox to five hits and one walk over seven and two thirds scoreless innings in a five one victory. But the way he started the game Ellsbury got the base hit. You see Gordon going to left center field and making a nice running catch one down. But when he picked off Ellsbury it really kind of set the tone for what he would do in that game and it completely shut down Boston's running game the rest of the way. It did had Ellsbury been successful in the steal you never know what would have happened could have opened up a big inning. But see a lot of guys will go on first movement. See, minute that minute Bruce lifts up his leg, they take off. But Hosmer, with his great throwing ability, no problem. Now Giancarlo Stanton, who's 23 years old, but already has had two remarkable seasons. Two years ago, hit 34 home runs. Last year, 37. Been limited this year because of injuries, and only has 13. But 106 home runs at the age of 23. Might be the strongest guy in baseball. 6'6, 240. Now, Christian Yelich, he's just new. I mean, he's only got 88 at bats. He's got one stolen base. He's got decent speed, but not a, a, a base stealing type of leadoff hitter. Good overall speed, though. Well, that time, Bruce Chen's move. Had Yelich going back towards first base. They appeal, and Giancarlo Stanton is down in the count. Got to make sure he has to mix up his pitches, especially against this guy. And yes, he went. Right handers only hitting 185 off Bruce with two home runs. Skies it in the air, center field, Dyson. Two outs. Now I talked to Gerard Dyson about that ball G Stanton hit uh, to him last night 112 hit speed off of the bat. I said and Gerard missed it for an error. 
And I said, hey, Gerard, had you ever had a ball hit on the ground at you like that before? And he said, no way. I couldn't believe it. He hit the ball, and it was on me. I didn't even have any time to, to get my feet set. And I, I backed up on it because I was surprised by it. So this is, a, this is where the big boys play up here. <laughs> and, and as you said, Stanton hits the ball as hard as anybody. Oh, man. So, so Gerard said, hey, I'll be a little bit more prepared tonight. Popped up, left side, long run, Jamie Carroll. Will he get there? No, just beyond his reach. Although I will say this, Hud. That home run that Billy Butler hammered, it was going about 110 leaving here. Yeah, but we didn't get an actual clock on that. No. But, but, but Billy, he raked it. Billy's was 100 even, but he had some arc on his, and he hit it 419 feet. Into the seats beyond the Royals' bullpen. Ground ball, Hosmer. He'll come back to the bag. Good job by Chen in the first. We'll see the young gun, Jose Fernandez, when we come back. At the All Star break, but after the break, his team has gone 19 and 5, and they've moved past Cleveland into second place in the American League Central. And they're moving up in the American League Wild Card, four games back of Oakland and Tampa Bay, and Baltimore just in front of the Royals. Here is Chris Getz, a three hit game last night in four at bats, up his average to 223, coming off that disabled list where he had injured his left knee back on July 28th. This is Fernandez. That's a fair ball. And coming back to the bag is Lucas for the first out. Here's a look at the Royals lineup. Gets Hosmer, Butler, Gordon, Lowe, Escobar, Kataris, Carroll, and Dyson facing the 21-year-old rookie Jose Fernandez, born in Cuba. But his family fled the island before his sophomore year in high school, and he just roared through the high school ranks in Tampa to be a first-round pick in 2011. 143 strikes. Whoa, Watch man. Out. Watch out. Ooh, man. Wow. And that was on a fastball. Usually you'll see a swing like that where a guy loses his bat on a changeup. Oh, yeah. Well, it looks like everybody's all right. Well, they already casted the arm. Yeah, how about that? That's some bat speed there. I mean, he's not messing around. I was saying, you know what? I'll, I'll that. <laughs> Look at that. We get out of the way. Oh, nice. Guy took that off the left forearm. Right so now, security good. checking on the health yeah, of everybody in that area. He's saying, hey, I want that Hosmer bat. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Don't you take that, for, even though they'll take it. So it has it. nothing to do about health. No, they'll put it up in a secure place. 
But Fernandez just ripped one off at 97 miles an hour that got by Mathis all the way back to the backstop. Yeah, he'll go. He'll, you'll see some 98s, maybe some 99s. 143 strikeouts and 132 and a third. He's really good. He's got a big power. Two different speeds to his curveball, is there? He's got one that he slows down and then one's a little, a little bit tighter. Doesn't throw a slider. And he's got a changeup that he'll use. He'll use that against lefties. But his fastball, it doesn't sink. It kind of bores in and away. Away from lefties. Look at that. Well, we saw a great fastball against a very good fastball hitter. And victory number one goes to the pitcher. He's going to use this upstairs. Look at Jeff Mathis, veteran catcher. In his eighth season behind the plate. Fernandez, fifth in the National League in ERA, third in batting average against, and also fourth in strikeouts per nine innings, averaging 9.7 per nine. Here's Billy Butler, and he has been on a hot streak. 438 on this homestand, a couple of home runs to raise his average to 288. He launched one last night down the left field line and into the seats. Royals won last night six to two and they go for their eighth straight series victory since the All Star break tonight. This kid's got a compact delivery strong lower half and he goes right downhill to home. Got to look at the fat you got to look for his fastball and adjust to anything else especially with two strikes. Okay, the defense by the Marlins they're young. They got a strong arm in right field and stand. He can really throw. Has had a few miscues. As everybody does, but watch for his arm. That's banged back up the middle. And Billy almost got Fernandez, who had to skip out of the way. Can't sneak a piece of cheese by Billy right now. Heck, he's all over it. Red hot. That's how you hit a fastball that's projected, that's thrown that hard. You shorten up your swing. Let the pitcher's velocity supply the power. You've got to be as short with the bat. Not real long. Beautiful stroke. Now, Big Papa back from his leave to see his son, Sam Patrick, being born. Gordon and his wife Jamie celebrated the birth of their second son. Sam is eight pounds, 15 ounces. Nice baby. Beautiful. He said a nice big baby. He told me today. I'll say. I will sleep through the night early. And he said they had the baby yesterday at 2 o'clock. He said, I almost came to the ballpark. I said, come on, Alex. You know. And he goes, I almost did. I, I wanted to, but <laughs> I, I went ahead and stayed. But he yeah. couldn't wait to get to the yard today. He said he watched the game. Yeah, he told Nate Bucati that, you know, families comes first, even before baseball. Way inside, three balls and no strikes. Okay, now you would like to wait this guy out. Okay, the game plan on him is to try to wait him out, maybe expend some pitches. Uh, you know, get him out of there as soon as you can. Rex, that's a great point because they're controlling his pitch count this year, and they don't want him to go over 170 innings for the season. He was up to 100 pitches in the fifth inning of his last start, and that's when they yanked him after five innings, and he received a no decision and a 5-4, 10 inning loss to Pittsburgh. How about a 3-0 curveball to Alex Gordon? That's some respect. He busts this one to right field. Stanton is back, reaches up, and makes the catch. He misplayed it at first, froze, and then still had time to go back and make the play.
question who has the toughest path to the playoffs are unlimited answers a winning the American League Central currently the Ro Royals trail the Tigers by six and a half games or B winning a wild card spot text four three two four three two and enter a or B well wild card spots a little closer I love two wild cards getting in this year I just think it's making it interesting throughout baseball it does it brings in more cities and here is a great veteran Placido Polanco you almost want to introduce him to sing the national anthem <laughs> one of the great tenors in the world Placido Polanco but he has 13 at bats in his career against Bruce five hits two homers. Good hitter likes to go to the opposite field. Now 37 years young out of the Dominican Republic. This is his 15th big league season. Good for him. 2,121 hits. Steady ball player. Indeed. Loves baseball. And there was a time he was one of the best second basemen in the game. He had 341 one year for Detroit. Play him anywhere. Third base. Shoot. Hitting 257 this year with one home run, 20 RBIs. The Royals at 62 and 54, second in the Central. The Marlins 44 and 73, last in the National League East, 27 games back of Atlanta. They have lost eight of their last nine and are only 18 and 41 in the road. And Daughters get a little tired here early. Got a great pitching matchup, young lady. Oh, we're glad that they came. So are the Royals. The baseball players love to see the people here at the game, man. I'm telling you. It's a different vibe. These fans know that they, they got a special product out there. And Ned Yost was talking about that energy. He said they really felt it in that Boston series and even last night with a crowd of 15 16,000 here and he said he also felt it on Sunday when they had photo day and every single fan they met who came in to get autographs or pictures taken with the ball players a lot of positive vibes from Royal fans who came for photo day it should be it's, this team's really good and it's added a whole bunch of excitement but but you know the fans are cheering for the players when they're introduced something that I haven't heard before and they're really paying attention to this team. They're exciting to watch. Here is Donovan Solano had a couple of hits yesterday a single and a double. 25 years old out of Columbia. This is a very young team and that's why dead last in batting last in runs scored. Last in home runs last in doubles last in RBIs, and last in the National League East. Wow. It's pretty tough when you're paid to win. And I talked to Mike Redman, first year manager for the Marlins. Bruce loses it. And I asked him, I said, Mike, now that's not Mike right there, but that's one of his coaches. He said, Red Dog, how's it been? First year on the job. He said, you know, it's really hard when you're paid to win and you lose. There's Redman. Pretty good catcher in his day. Really good. 13 year big leaguer. First year on the job. He said, you know, we have to teach a lot here. We have to coach a lot, do a lot of teaching because they're so young. But the positive is when you see the progress that they make. Stay with them. A lot of encouraging. Well, they really feel like this young man will be a future star in the game. Dana Echevarria. Outstanding defensive shortstop. Ground ball right side gets gets it to Escobar. They've got no chance to get Echeverria. But a nice play by gets to get the lead runner. Yeah you know and, and Echeverria he's grounded into 16 double plays this year. So I was just about ready to say here comes another one. But ball was just a little too far. From Getzy. Chris gets. 
get that first sure out. Royals defense has really been special. They did make a couple of errors yesterday, both by outfielders. Still only 10 errors in their last 32 games. Very athletic plays we saw last night. One by Justin Maxwell climbing the wall in foul territory and right. David Lowe, a remarkable throw to cut down Echeverria at second base, trying to stretch a single into a double. And I asked Alex Gordon as he watched the game, did you see your buddy Lowe throw him out from left field? <laughs> he goes, yeah, Hud. He had a big smile on his face. I said, did it bring you out of your chair like it did me? He goes, yeah. As a matter of fact, Hud, I got excited when I saw that. <laughs> and Alex doesn't get excited that often. No, but when you're watching a game and you're used to being a participant in it, it's totally different. Oh, no question. Marisnik with pretty good power has not shown it at the big league level yet. But remember he's only 22 years young at out of Riverside California. But he mm. tore up the minor leagues. Hit two grand slams Rex in one game. May 30th. Oh. It was back in double A. Pretty good. Have a nice month in one game. We saw his arm. Throughout Chris gets yesterday. He's got a got a tremendous throwing arm. But he's trying to catch up here now offensively. It'll take him a little while. Let's see how Chen works him looking for his first strikeout. Popped up. That's one thing we saw a lot of in Bruce's last start. A lot of pop ups. Typically you'll see that. 15 16 15 pop ups and you know you'll see that when you're off balance got a pitcher with good off speed stuff you're out in front you lift it at is going and it's fouled off by Marisnik. Hey fans, the new player section Gordo Nation is every Wednesday home game for the remainder of the season. Cheer on All Star Alex Gordon and his special fan section with a $30 ticket that includes a limited edition Gordo Nation t shirt and seat in the field box or plaza sections in left field. The next Gordo Nation is tomorrow afternoon, which is a special 110 game time against the Marlins. Get your tickets at royals.com slash Gordo Nation. And when you get out there in the left field stands, get all the fans together and have them chant, Congratulations, Gordo. Runner goes and they've got it picked off. You could see it coming from miles away. Bruce Chen, after he broke on him last time, he was going to get Echeverria, and he did.
is. We'll face David Lowe, Alcides Escobar, George Kataris. Strike one. Lowe with his 20th multi hit game of the year. That's in the top five of all rookies in the American League. Two for three with a walk. Also drove in a run. And he bangs that one to first. Easy play for Lucas, who will come back to the bag one out. Join us for the next summer fireworks on Friday, August 23rd versus the Nationals. Stay after the game for a fireworks show courtesy of High V and Pepsi. Plus, it's Buck Night, which means hot dogs, peanuts, and small soft drinks are just one dollar. Go to Royals.com or call 1-800-6-ROYALS for tickets for summer fireworks and Buck Night. Back at the K. Marlins no runs one hit Royals no runs one hit Escobar quite a homestand 14 hits and 29 at bats. And he's raised his average from the low 230s to 246. Yeah nice to see it he's just two hits shy of a career best 11 game hitting streak he set last year in September. Out of play. There it is. 15 hits in 34 at bats during this nine gamer. Two hits last night, including a, a flare triple to right seat, right field. It was misplayed by Stanton. And it's almost an identical shot, but this time Stanton hasn't played that way and runs out of real estate. Our ultimate internet pitch speed shows Fernandez topping out at 98. Bruce Chen has topped out at 88. Get download speeds up to 50 megabits per second with Time Warner Cable. Ultimate internet. Fernandez at 6'3-220. Breaks his bat, rolls it to Lucas. Two quick outs. It's going to break a lot of bats. Going to mix him up too. He's not just going to come in there and pump that fastball in there. You can see uh, the, the comparison. He's got two different speeds to his curve. Pretty effective change up to lefties. See if he can throw Kataris a strike. Kataris will work the count as well as any Royal. 23 walks in 99 plate appearances. That's tops in the major leagues of ball players who have not yet had 100 plate appearances. Just off the plate, two and one. <laughs> that was filthy. Did you see the movement on that pitch? Yeah, I did. Oh, and, and, and Rex, do you think Kataris is so disciplined that he keyholes him and said, if it's not in this certain spot, I'm not swinging? Yeah. Well, he swung at one in his spot and he gets a line single. Right. Both hits have been right back up the middle. Yeah, that's a good word. Keyhole. Watch it. Here, here, okay, here's the one before. Look at the movement down and away. I mean, great spot. Surprised it wasn't called a strike. Now George says, all right, he's going to come back with one straight. Look how short his swing was. Look at that. He didn't even follow through. It's like he played pepper with it. He just wants to meet it. And he understands that when you got a guy that throws that hard, you don't swing hard. You swing easy. The ball jumps. Well, then Jamie Carroll could be a tough out because he doesn't swing hard. He does chop one foul left side. Strike one. Jamie played in his first game as a Royal last night. Went 0 for 2. He was with the Minnesota Twins before he was picked up. Dayton Moore immediately when Miguel Tejada went down made a phone call to Terry Ryan and made the deal Carroll for a player to be named later. Wanted to get a veteran. Yep. And there is Miggy. We hope he is on the disabled list for a very short spell and Carroll tries to dump one to right but Stanton had him played very shallow and makes the catch for out number three.
back to work. Jake Marisnik will lead things off. He was at the plate when Echeverria was cut down trying to steal, picked off by Chen, and thrown out at second base by Hosmer. Yeah, that's the bonus at bat. Whenever you get to see three or four pitches, then the guy gets thrown out for the third out. That's beautiful. Now you, you already have an advantage the next time you step in. Didn't get counted as an at bat. He saw seven pitches before that guy got thrown out. So you think he's figured out, Bruce? Well, that helps him. Yeah. I'm telling you, you see, you see seven. You're better than seeing none. Bruce has him down, nothing and two. Royals won last night, six to two, as Wade Davis, through six innings, gave up just a couple of runs. He's hanging around as Bruce comes in with that cut fastball at 83 miles an hour. He's got about seven different pitches, maybe eight. He could go, he could throw as many as nine different with his arm angles, changes the speeds. Look at that. That time. He had slowed his bat down so much that when he threw him the 88 mile an hour fastball, it looked like it was about 95. Yeah, that's actually the fastball slows his bats down. The, the opponent's bats. Speeds him up with the off speed. There it is, coming right down to me. Here is Jeff Mathis, veteran out of Mariana, Florida. He's quite a quarterback too, wasn't he? Out of high school, he was recruited at the same time as Joe Maurer to be the quarterback at Florida State. But Jeff told me that he was more of an option quarterback. Joe Maurer, a uh, pro-style quarterback, and he said when when Maurer said he was going to go there, I realized I'd be a backup. But he got drafted early by the Angels, signed right out of high school, and has had a very good career. Very strong defensively. Mm -hmm. Very strong defensively. A little bit off uh, as far as you know batting average and stuff. He's got some occasional power. About 30 years old now. He waves at a fastball thrown by Bruce. That is back to back K's for Chen. Just, just really fun to watch him. He creates as he goes along. He's an artist. Deception, control, movement, the way he changes speeds. And that's why we really thought it would be a tremendous contrast in watching two different pitchers, a young power pitcher. An older veteran who knows his craft well and his precise location of his pitches, teasing batters to reach out of the strike zone to try and get base hits. His last outing was one of his best of the year against the Boston Red Sox, one of the top offenses in the game, and he held them to seven and two thirds innings of shutout baseball one walk two strikeouts 15 flyouts. Well, Yelich is on for the second time with a walk. Yelich a two time Marlins minor league player of the year Yelich back to back years pretty impressive. Let's go to Joe Goldberg. Well as you mentioned before Ed Lucas and his history in 2004 he's still friends with a lot of these guys and he says as a matter of fact with these young Royals he is a teammate or was a teammate at some point with most of these guys in the minors and when you think about it he was drafted back in 04 and he played on a rookie ball team with Billy Butler Billy was a high school kid coming to rookie ball 
Ed was a college kid, and now all of these years later, and we know about the storied career of Billy Butler so far, Ed Lucas is finally getting a shot. Said he's really excited to catch up with so many of these guys from Luke Hochaver to Mike Moustakis, Greg Holland, Gerard Dyson, on and on. He's been with these guys as teammates, or even guys like Eric Hosmer, seen them in the clubhouse in spring training, and just took him a long time, grateful to be here, and still keeps in touch with Billy Butler. 31-year-old rookie out of Grand Rapids, Michigan, by way of Dartmouth. And he had some memorable moments. Every single big leaguer remembers their first base hit. Well, he's had some good early moments in June. He had a four-hit game against the Mets. He also had his first major league home run against a World Series champion in Barry Zito. 31-year-old rookie. We've seen a few of those guys around the league this year. A couple guys getting in their shots in 2013. Better late than never. Rex, what must you have if a club is going to give you that chance at that age? You've got to have good leadership skills. And you've got to be able to hit that ball and have some kind of numbers. Because this is a performance-based business and see what Gessie can do. Come on, Chris. I thought he drove the bus last night, Fizz. Back to back bus drivers possible? Maybe. <laughs> Gerard Dyson will lead things off for the Royals in the third inning. I would love to see the speed guys get on and to see how Fernandez operates with a runner on base who can steal. How about an 88 mile an hour changeup for you right there? And I would too, Fizz. But you can't steal first base. That's the one thing no one's figured out how to do. <laughs> Knocks it foul. He almost stole first base last night on that high chopper over the infield. I mean, he was roaring down the line. A slower runner would have been out at first base, but he was able to reach on the infield hit, drive in a run, and then later come around to score. Waves at the big breaking ball and strikes out. Rick Myers is sitting in the Buck O'Neill's legacy seat, selflessly giving his time to make school athletics better. Rick serves as a volunteer athletic director at St. Regis Grade School while spending countless hours organizing athletic functions. Rick also wrote and coordinated grant applications, eventually earning the schools two major grants that allowed them to rebuild their football field, remodel their gym floor, and buy all new equipment for various sports and that is at a, as a volunteer Chris Getz tries to go gap nice running catch by Marisnik. Oh I'll say good jump on him. Yeah. 0 
Jose Fernandez gets two quick outs here in the third inning. He's thrown only a total of 33 pitches. Well, there's not a lot of guys getting any very many hits off the off of him. 193 average. He's given up. Lefty's 201. This is a good matchup here, though. Fernandez against Hosmer. He struck out the kid from Miami. First time up, and he almost hit him. Eric had to dive out of the way of that inside fastball at 97 miles an hour. Might have hurt. I'll say. But look at this. I mean, how that miss him? That's quick right there, man. I'm going to tell you, that's last second action. <laughs> That'll set up something away. Yeah, there it he was. does go away with the off speed. Yep. But, you know, I guarantee you, Hosmer is looking for one thing. And he needs to tell himself to stay short to the ball. Beautifully located fastball at 97. Can't hit that. Not where that was located. Yeah, Man. that's that's, uh, that's off the plate. And then Hosmer lines out to the second baseman. So the Royals go one, two, three in the third. To the fourth we go. We'll see Giancarlo Stanton when we come back. Charity concert featuring the Eli Young Band on October 3rd. Go to baconadifference.com. Again, only $10 to go to that concert, and all proceeds go to the Harvester's Food Bank. Oh, folks, don't miss out this opportunity to entertain yourself, but also feed others. Harvester's Food Bank, man, they take care of a lot of folks. We've heard some of the tunes from the Eli Young Band. Here is Stanton flat out to center field his first time up hit it a mile high but gave Dyson plenty of time to run under it. Bruce locates it perfectly and takes the count his way one and two. Stanton missed a whole month of the season early this year when he hurt his hammy. Last year he had knee problems. Yeah, I set him back. He was scheduled to hit in the home run derby here in Kansas City, but couldn't do that because he had arthroscopic knee surgery. Three and two. Pretty good eye for a young player, but they have been pitching around him so often. He walked 27 times in July, most in the majors.
Bruce came after him running that cut fastball on his hands. We've seen that a lot. He gets a lot of pop ups on that pitch. Breaks his bat, shatters it. Escobar won't reach it. It's a base hit. It's almost like that bat exploded on contact. It did. Bruce got in his kitchen. That's a term that's used when you get jammed. Your buddies will say, get him out of there, and I'll guarantee you. He got it out of there. Strong enough to get over Escobar's head. Each team with two hits. That bat, man, that really died a hero. I mean, it got, it exploded. I didn't think you could salvage that one, give it to charity. Logan Morrison sends it to center field, playable for Dyson. Stanton is going back to tag. Dyson with the catch. Stanton does not go. Because you know last night Stanton we timed it the ball he hit to Dyson 112 hit speed that jam shot right there just a little over 50. How about that? Let's show it again. Okay. That's the jam Tom right there the jam shot jam sandwich call it what you want but it's a base hit but it didn't go very fast. That's called a doinker. So he took 54 miles an hour off of his hit speed. Uh, he hit a changeup. Yeah, we'll show you the one last night. It was his laser. Watch this. Watch Dyson up the top of your screen. One, two hopper, ate him up. I mean, that ball, it, it nearly put a dent in the wall on the ground. Blanco hit a comebacker to Chen to lead off the second inning. He's always been a good hitter from foul line to foul line, career 298 average. Stanton just has one stolen base, not going anywhere. Ball two strikes. If they do, George Guitaris, he's caught five out of 28 for a 17.9 percentage. And George loves catching Bruce Chan. He said I get to think with him. How is he setting him up? Are we going to put a little something on take a little something off? Yeah, it's, it's not easy facing a guy like Bruce. Tommy John after he had his Tommy John surgery. pitched a lot like Bruce. Dyson will run this down in right center field and Stanton. We'll go back. Hey, Jayhawk fans, help us fill the stadium with crimson and blue at KU Day on August 25th. Buy tickets at Royals.com slash KU and the first 750 fans with the KU ticket get a limited edition crimson and blue Royals cap. So join your fellow Jayhawks at KU Day presented by Rally House and Fox Sports Kansas City. It was great to see Jayhawk basketball coach Bill Self here when he and James Shields got together to offer their services to help foster care programs in Kansas City area. Sure was. Gotta love that. Well, I've got a chance to know Bill through the years doing college basketball, one of the best in America. Mm. 
Hit sharply. Nice play by Jamie Carroll. How about that? Well, I'll tell you what. Jamie Carroll, he fits right in. They all could make nice plays. That way. Since the beginning of last year, Billy Butler, after the All-Star break, has always done well. And you see his numbers the last two seasons, hitting 339. Only Miguel Cabrera's ha had a higher batting average at 343. And I was talking with Billy about that, and he said it was rather unusual last year when he hit so well in the first half and continued his success in the second half when he had 29 home runs and over 100 RBIs. The fact that you're a strong finisher, that's always a good thing. Because no matter how you start, you know you're going to finish strong. That's confidence. And really, that's the mark of a good major league hitter. Not how you start, it's how you finish. This is his career first half and second half. 311 batting average in the second half. And he has really picked things up lately. Hitting close to 450 on this homestand. Now, you ask him why, he'll say, I'm seeing the ball better. Well, he also told me before the game he was being pitched differently. And he said it really helps having Alex Gordon in the four spot. He's seeing better pitches from the opponent. He hammers that one to right field, but Stanton will run it down. It's one out. Well, the uh, proud papa, Alex Gordon, coming to the plate, and he talked about the birth of his second son, Sam Patrick. Oh, amazing. Uh, there's a lot of things better than baseball, and uh, family's one of them. So, uh, you know, I was, wasn't excited to miss the game, but it was, it was fun to watch it at home and uh, see the boys win. And they did last night, 6-2. to two. Gordo Nation, congrats, Alex. Eight pounds, 15 ounces. That means... Sam will be uh, sleeping through the night earlier than the littler babies. Beautiful. You bet. 26 years ago, our daughter was 9 pounds, 6 ounces. Slept through the night at one month. All-American baby. Crazy. Center field. Marisnik is able to pull it down for out number two. So twice Gordon has hit the ball pretty hard. Once to deep right now once to deep left center field and two outs for Jose Fernandez. Yeah you know what it's not exactly like they're hitting him soft. There's, there's been some hard hit balls off of Fernandez. Now I'm not surprised because how hard he throws is shortened up a little bit but him and Mathis are having a nice good time. I don't, I don't know what Jeff said to him, but it got Jose laughing and he shoved him back. Like, 
Are you sure you want to throw that pitch? I tried to call another one and you shook me off. Don't do that again. Yeah, or he probably said, you know, you're, you're giving up a lot of mileage. <laughs> keep, keep it down. I'm, I'm coming out here just to allow your outfielders to rest a little bit. That's right. David Lowe grounded out to first, his first time up. Fernandez's story is incredible. His family fled Cuba in the dark of night on an overcrowded speedboat with his mother and sister, and that was after failing to escape three other times and spending time in prison. Ground ball first, Lucas. We'll talk more about Fernandez and his amazing story later in this game. Twenty fourth as we pay tribute to the Negro Leagues when the Royals face off against the Washington Nationals at 610 in the evening. The first 10,000 fans will receive a Monarchs T-shirt courtesy of Papa John. Both teams will be outfitted in Negro Leagues jerseys as well. Get tickets at Royals.com or 1-800-6-Royals and join us as we salute the Negro Leagues. And fans, if you have not been to that museum, you've got to get over there. The history they have, whether it's about Jackie Robinson or some of the other Kansas City Monarchs guys like the great Satchel Page. It yep. is a great display and a tremendous tribute to those that had to fight to break through the color barrier. Oh it's a great education. That ball struck pretty well. Gordon racing near the foul line and makes a nice running catch. Also though you know the teams that don't get a chance to come to Kansas City very often like the Marlins they were all over that yesterday their first day I, I bet there was 10 or 15 of them went there. So they're smart you gotta see the sights in the cities you get to go to now that ball is a good off speed pitch down low. And it hit it off the end of the bat couldn't barrel. It. Cruz hitting the spots. He's given up two hits. He struck out Marisnik. Jake has seen a lot of pitches. He was at the plate when Echevarria was picked off, but that was on the seventh pitch that Marisnik saw. And then he batted the next inning and struck out. And very quickly, Chen has an 0 2 count. And if you folks that were watching the great pregame show of Joel Goldberg and Jeff Montgomery, you probably said, you know, I bet this is going to be a low scoring game. And if you said that, you're right. You got two good pitchers like this, both different, uh, different styles. I mean, one older, one younger. It's really fun to watch. Cruz at the top of his game has has probably a couple years left in him. Well, he's pitching, and the 21-year-old Fernandez. Wow, bright future ahead. Try to get that fastball on the outside corner taken by Marisnik. Who now has a one two count. They'll stay away. Curveball hit in the ground past 
Escobar into left field. Our AT&T trivia question for this evening has to do with who is the Marlins all time home run leader. And what's interesting is this is an organization that's only been around since 1993 and they've had so many guys move through the organization who have been early stars there then been traded whether it's power hitters like Gary Sheffield or Miguel Cabrera. Kidding me? I know this one. How does he let the fans catch up a little bit? Does he have a Kansas City connection? I'm sure he does. That's a hint. No, I might be wrong, but I feel pretty good about it. We go ahead and give you the answer, so then we can move on. I think you're going to have to go through Joe Lavero, not oh. through me. Okay. We're going to wait a half oh, inning. Might as well. And I'll, I'll, I'll guess guys that aren't the answer. Preston Wilson. Cliff Floyd. Gary Sheffield. And I threw up Miggy Cabrera. That's right. Tremendous player even before he went to the Tigers. We remember that rookie season he had in 2003 helping them to the championship. Although that was the team where Josh Beckett was named MVP in the World Series. He beat the Yankees four games to two. Rara Derek Lee Alex Gonzalez were. Some of the hitting stars, but they won on pitching. And who's 10 wins this duel with Jeff Mathis for out number two. If you like pitching, you're tuning into the right game. Bruce is just slowing them down and speeding the bats up. Well, he is indeed a craftsman. And Bruce has told us before he really feels that. College calculus and physics helped his pitching because it helped being mentally alert and remembering sequences. His cousin and his father are electrical engineers, and his sister is a electromechanical engineer. And Bruce is a painter with the baseball in his hand, and if you can't paint a better sunset than that, that's beautiful. Weather at the K this year has been off the charts. Wonderful. In the air, left side for Alex Gordon. Bruce Chen, five shutout innings. What else is new? ERA that was 1.79 at the start of the game, going down.
Joel Goldberg back at the K where 21-year-old Jose Fernandez is on the hill. He was here for the Futures game last season. And Steve Fiziak a little while ago talking about his story. There is, and I encourage everyone, a great article on Grantland.com about Jose Fernandez and his journey. And in reading through that, guys, you know, so many kids and families leave for a better life and for baseball. But from what I understand in that article, life wasn't so bad for his family. But And they were happy there. But his stepfather was denied approval to go on a medical mission. And that is when he decided to defect tried 13 times that he failed before finally coming over and then as you mentioned it was Jose and his mom and some of the family coming over they failed a few times he went to prison as a 14 year old they ended up going through Mexico before coming over to the United States then Jose at a young age throwing 84 miles an hour for his fastball 15 years old starts working with a renowned trainer who worked with Levon Hernandez and El Duque and buys a glove for $14 at Walmart, shows up at high school baseball tryouts throwing 94 miles an hour, and <laughs> things took off from there. But he still didn't know how to pitch, and this gentleman really taught him how to pitch, and his teammates now say gregarious personality, but he can pitch like a 35-year-old with all that ability. It really truly is one of the great stories. And you want to talk about whether this kid is afraid or not? He was on that boat was on watch one night all the rocky waves and he was the one that was up on watch in case somebody fell over he heard somebody fall over dove in to save that person and he found out as he was saving that person that that was his mother wow and he had to have her grab the back of his neck and swim 30 yards back to the boat he said it took 15 minutes to get back to the boat because the water was so choppy eventually yeah. getting to Tampa and the coach that Joe's talking about, his name is Chinea. Worked with El Duque, Levan Hernandez, Orlando Arroyo, Jose Contreras, and right now Fernandez strikes out George Cataras, who got a single his first time up. And the one thing Chinea told him was he said, Son, if you could flee Cuba and risk your life on a boat to get to freedom, you should have no fear in baseball. Yep. And he, and he shows it. He's free and he's strong. Lower body. Jamie Carroll popped up to right field. All three outfielders playing Jamie shallow. He chokes up on the bat and takes a strike. It's one and one. Bottom yep. of the order was really important for the Royals last night in their win. They went six for 11 with three runs, three RBIs, three stolen bases. You know, Hollywood makes a movie about everything. I can't believe there hasn't been a movie on somebody defecting. Call it the defector. How about this young man? He defects I mean, before his sophomore year in high school. And because he was defecting, he had to spend time in prison as a high school student. One time for two weeks, another for a month, another for... Two months. Unbelievable. Fernandez made it to the States, made it to the big leagues, and was an all-star this year for the National League.
From red tripos to the Panera way, live consciously, eat deliciously, and buy Ford. See the new F-150 at your Midwest Ford dealer today. And by ATT UVerse TV. Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. Rethink possible. Sun is setting at the K. No runs because of a great pitching duel between the veteran Bruce Chen, the young gun Jose Fernandez. Ed Lucas will lead it off. 0 for 2. Fly to left. Struck out. Boy, we've seen that a lot from Bruce coming in with that cut fastball. And he'll do that when his when he comes right over the top of his arm angle. He likes to throw the cutter from there. He'll drop his arm down. He'll throw fastballs from that spot, but it, it's more deceptive. Look. And then he throws a pitch like that, a slider, same velocity as that cut fastball, but dips down underneath the bat. And then, you know, he throws it again. Why not? If he finds a spot in there and the guy keeps swinging it, he's going to do it. But, you know, the fact that he'll go sidearm, three quarters, and straight over the top, those are like having extra pitches in, in itself. And then he gets him on a fly ball to center field. Now Bruce to face the most dangerous Marlin, Giancarlo Stanton. He of the 106 career home runs. Twice he's had at least 34 in a season, including 37 last year. There was a lot of talk that he would be moved before the trade deadline for prospects because they know they're young. Their future is not now, probably not next year. Stanton pops up. Well, you know, he's getting a little frustrated. So, who is the Marlins' all time home run leader? I believe it's Jeff Conine. Good guess. You are wrong. Dan Ugla. My goodness, Al, he's really good. Conine's actually number seven on the list. Oh, well. I'm not a Marlins expert. Hanley Ramirez is second and Mike Lowell is third. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. I've got to do more research on my Marlins history. But they keep on changing the team. I mean it was a completely different team last year from manager Ozzie Guillen who was fired at the end of the year only lasted one season. Then they traded stars Josh Johnson Mark Burley Jose Reyes Ricky Nolasco this year. Escobar gets Morrison Chen with a one two three sixth inning. He's done it again. Here comes the lightning and Jose Fernandez.
Rod Dyson swings at the first pitch from Jose Fernandez and knocks it foul. Country breakfast. A little Chen music. The hunt for Blue October. Not a bad idea. Steve Fiziak, Rex Hudler. We're now joined by Jeff Montgomery. And Monty, I first got to ask you about this 21 year old flamethrower. Just your thoughts and how good he is. Well, it's just obviously very dynamic. I love the way everything moves down. Everything's different velocities, but he's got things that move in different directions. And everything that is hard has a final way to get down in the strike zone. I, that's what I like most about him. How about that run fastball he's got? I mean, it's not exactly a sinker. It's got, it's got a little bit of that, that to it. Yeah, a lot of sinkers. To the lefties will go down and away, and his kind of goes across. It's more of a lateral breakaway. Our AT&T Uverse rewind. This is Dyson's first at bat. Yeah, and here's the example of what I was talking about. How everything's moving down. It's just like it bottoms out. It reminds me a lot of how Greg Holland's his slider really just kind of disappears right there at the end. And that was an 83 mile an hour off speed pitch that Dyson just took looking. Yeah, he's he's unbelievable. And he's been throwing Dyson a lot of off speed pitches. He's not challenging Dyson with his fastball. What I've seen is he's thrown 3 0 breaking balls through Alex, a 3 0 breaking ball. I mean, that's obvious confidence in your off speed stuff. And if you can do that, and then we see Greg Holland, that's kind of reminiscent of what he's been able to do over these last several weeks. And, Monty, I really felt that one of the keys for the Royals' victory were, would be to get their speed guys on. Gets, Escobar, Dyson, they have not been able to reach yet. And be able to get him from the stretch and maybe get in his mind that they would steal because the Royals number one in the American League stealing bases with 93. That's up the middle backhanded. Solano will get gets by a step. Well this is our Sonic Slam inning and our contestant is Julie Ross from Overland Park if the Royals hit a home run in this inning. Julie will win eight hundred dollars but if the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park. Julie will win 25 grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. Tell you what, he works quickly, and his his windup is compact and quick, huh, Monty? Watch yeah, him. he's he's very delivered, knows exactly what he's got in mind. Oh. He's got a great sense of humor humor on the mound too, doesn't he? Yeah, he's smiling. Now, what happened here? Oh no, that was the last time Osmer was up there. Just yeah, he's <laughs> Osmer looked at him and said, "All right, it's all right." And he needles one in the outside corner beautifully to Eric, who is 0 for 2. He struck out and lined out to the second baseman. Hey, it's quite Big a rip. It's quite a test for a hitter when you're facing a guy like this. I would think the hitters maybe start stepping out a little bit on this guy because he's really commanding the pace of this game, like at, at his pace for sure. Great idea, Monty. Exactly. Change it up a little bit. Look at this. Wow. Just quick, quick work. Ooh. It's what we expected.
Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local Dodge dealer today. And buy five-hour energy shots. Steve Fiziak, Rex Heller, Jeff Montgomery with you at Kauffman Stadium. Joel Goldberg, he's with us as well. Jose Fernandez has been outstanding. He has been overpowering. But as we talked about in the open, Bruce Chen has been confounding. He continues to baffle every single member of the Marlins. And you get the feeling as you walked into the booth, Monty, you said you had the feeling that whoever hits a home run is going to win this game. A lot of times games like this are decided by a long ball, and I just hope it's going to be somebody wearing a blue uniform. Mm -hmm. well, Bruce working the seventh inning. He's thrown 89 pitches. Polanco, Solano, Echeverria. Pitching has not been the Marlins' problem at all this year. Offense has. I was a little concerned about this game. A lot of times when you have young hitters against a veteran pitcher like a Bruce Chen who relies on you know, mixing things up, he doesn't get a chance to get into his game. But fortunately tonight we've seen Bruce do exactly what we're accustomed to seeing. Seeing a lot of fly balls, getting a lot of guys off balance in their swing. You got that right. You know, we know he's got six or seven pitches, but also how about this extra pitch if anybody does get on? Watch it. Okay, it looks like he's going home, looking ahead. Head's always the indicator for a lefty. If he looks at home and comes to first, he's going to get you. There you go. For Lion Hosmer, good, strong throw. No problem. Always nice to help yourself out. Got that right. That's a good breaking ball. Carlson hasn't given the last two. Trying to bring that in the backside. Bruce has been able to record nine fly ball outs. He had 15 in the victory over Boston. One ball, one strike. And really, both of these pitchers have a great pace going tonight. They're not wasting any time getting the ball. They're very confident on what they're going to throw. Tempo is really good. And one of the things that Bruce is doing, too, is he's throwing high fastballs to get guys out. And, and really, that's a good spot, especially when you're up over the middle. You hit to the deepest part of the park, that's an out. These guys, some of them are overmatched. They can't go deep dead center. There it is again. 86 mile an hour fastball that looked like 96 and Kataris thought he had Mustakis over at third base and threw it over Jamie Carroll's head recording the strikeout. Yep, a lot of high fastballs and and letting these young hitters flail away at it. We're used to seeing this against some of the veteran hitters where they get frustrated. You see them snapping their bats and doing all those things. The young hitters seeing Bruce for the first time, they're like, where is this guy coming from? Five strikeouts now for Bruce on the night. It's really interesting, Monty, when you talk about what the uh, management decided to do when Luis Mendoza pitched so many innings in the offseason in the Caribbean World Series and the WBC, and they decided that he was ready, so they start him and figured when Luis may be tired, they could move Bruce Chen right in there because Bruce usually is a slow starter and a strong finisher. And it was certainly a very seamless transition from one to the other. And I'm very proud of Bruce, the way he handled things in the bullpen, led this team in victories over the last three years or so, and he just really contributed a lot. But he knew going in the circumstance, he accepted it, and he performed very well. Fresh arm. Fouled off of George. That's the second time. I mean, the first pitch of the game that Chen threw was fouled off of the mask of Kataris, and Nick Kenny will go out there. Oh, man, I tell you, that one was jaw level. That that hurt. I mean, that was jaw. The, the first one they hit him, hit him on the forehead. I mean, that staggered him. Look at that. Wow. And, uh, you know, we saw that one of those put on. This is the one earlier in the first hitter of the game. And we saw Salvi go on the disabled list because of foul tips like that. So they don't take those lightly. No, there's definitely a concern whenever you take a blow to the head, especially when you have two in the same game. And Nate Bucati asked Ned Yost before the ball game, was Salvador not starting because of symptoms? And he said, absolutely not. It was nothing related to the concussion. They just were picking spots to rust him, Salvador, during this long stretch that the Royals have. 
Salvador has that new mask. Yep, he went down and got some of his gear in case he needs to come in late in the game. We've seen him on his off days come in in the eighth or ninth inning. Just because he's he's so gifted with his throwing ability. In case any Marlins get out there, it's Salvador to help Holland with the save. And really, it's not a surprise for Katara to be back there when Bruce Chin's on the hill because he's caught him during a lot of his starts this year. That Money. Time. This time of the game right here, it's going to be a home run that decides it. I'm with you. I mean, it's very possible because guys are having a hard time getting on base. I think it could come down to one swing. This could be Bruce's final pitch of the game. He has gone six and two thirds. Echeverry takes it inside, so it will not be as he'll continue that, but he's thrown 102 pitches, 67 strikes, 35 have missed. That was his third walk tonight. He's also struck out five, and Marisnik has one of the three Marlins hits, and it came with two strikes on him. You know, that pin's stirring a little bit, but I, I got to believe that Ned's going to see if he can somehow leave Bruce in for this last out. He's, he threw 108 pitches in his last outing versus the Red Sox. You know, another thing, guys, Ned seemed to try to work Bruce, so he only sees the lineup three times mm -hmm. through, and he's almost through this third time through the lineup, so hopefully he can get through another batter and put himself in a position. If one of the Royals hit a long ball, he gets the victory. There you go. Echeverria was picked off yesterday. Picked off by David Lowe in left field after he had singled. And Lowe went down the line and fired a strike to second base and got him by plenty. Bruce has been a shot of energy to this pitching staff. Well, not just this year, but. You know, his entire time here, he's been that energy for this rotation. He's been he's been the consistent guy. He's the guy's going out there most consistently and giving his team chances to win and certainly like what he's going to provide the second half, the fresh arm. First Kansas City left hander with at least three straight ten win seasons since Charlie Liebrandt did it, eighty four through eighty eight. Big swing and a miss, and he pulled that curveball out. Bennett down and below the bat of Marisnik. Okay, at the end of the season last year, we all went up there at Rivals and we all had a big powwow about who was the best hitter, best pitcher. And, and when I said pitcher of the year for me was Bruce Chin, you guys kind of looked at me funny, but I really enjoyed watching him. Maria will steal second base after being picked off by Chen back in the second. I mean, even though Bruce last year he had a 5.07 ERA, but he was 11 and 14 and really fun to watch in 191 innings. All right, so Bruce has got to bear down right here with the runner in scoring position. He's been bearing down all night. He has Marisnik down in the count, one and two. Marisnik's the 308 hitter with a runner in scoring position. And even on his 106th pitch, Bruce had a lot left in the tank. That was an 87 mile an hour fastball, and he's been topping out lately 87, 88 miles an hour. And will he throw that change up here? Yes, he does. Struck him out. Six in the game. A standing ovation for Chen Music as he heads to the dugout. Tremendous job, Bruce. Certainly qualified for the bus driver.
Jose Fernandez ready to pitch to a red hot Royal Billy Butler. He has one of the two singles on the night the other by George Kataris. In there one ball one strike. Hard to believe that a guy who's 21 knows how to pitch so well. We've seen him throw breaking balls and off speed pitches and fastball counts. Billy doesn't bite there. Two and one. Rex had an interesting conversation with Billy Butler today. He's talking about hitting the sinker last night. The ball he hit so far last night for the home run. Yeah. He said he hit the sinker. When you hit a sinker, you hit it on the laces. And you can hit it further. Wow, because it, it catches air pockets and takes off. Apparently, just said the ball compresses better. Now it's huh. a sinker, and he said the same thing with the hanging slider. You hit a hanging slider, you can hit it further because it's they're hitting the seams. Love it. Right now, he hit has him. a good count at three and one. Hit him right here. And then he doesn't throw the fastball. Yeah, he's kind of been patterning himself. As he goes down, he wipes dirt off the rubber. And then puts it on his hip. Watch it. He's been pitching backwards when he's behind. He walks Billy Butler to lead off the seventh inning. Vote for the Royals Player of the Month, sponsored by Majestic and Rally House. Vote at Rally House stores and get a chance to go on field and meet the winning player. Fernandez against Gordon, who twice has hit long fly balls, one to right, one to center. Ball one. Over 21,000 fans here at the K tonight, hoping Alex Gordon can come through against Jose Fernandez. There might be some people out there going, how come they don't pinch run for Billy? Oh, it's just still a little bit early. And if this score stays the same, and they come up in you know, the ninth inning, they'll want Billy's bat in there. This game potentially may go more than nine innings. It could. <laughs> Fernandez's next pitch will only be his 80th. Gordon sends it out of play. Two balls and one strike. Alex has been on him. He's hit two balls hard off him. You know, Rex, you mentioned the fact that he has that dirt on the side of his right side of his pants. Yeah, I watched him go down and, 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 and almost looked like he was angry, but he was getting dirt in his hand. He does not feel comfortable using a rosin bag. Growing up in Cuba, did not have a rosin bag. And there's a strike. It's two and two. So the side of his pants always dirty from grabbing dirt. There have been games, though, where it's hot and humid where he doesn't throw as well. So perhaps in the future as he grows up going to have to get comfortable with using rosin. I say we don't teach him that trick tonight. <laughs> Good point. And Alex Gordon goes down swinging. It's quite a contrast. He has a similar change up speed wise to Kelvin Herrera. That's the change up right there. Look at it. It's it's even low 90s change up. Yeah, that's great life on that pitch. Got tremendous finish <laughs> below the bat. That's a lot of guys fastball right there at 91. That was faster than my fastball. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. Huh? That was his change up. David Lowe twice is grounded out to first base. Now with a runner on, if he hits it to that side, it might sneak through. Joe Madden, Tampa Bay Rays. Manager said he's the best young pitcher at his age he's ever seen. Tell you, King Felix, awfully good. We saw him at the age of 20. I saw Doc Gooden at that age, too. Yeah. He was pretty good. I mean, when you think about the great rookies, seasons that first year pitchers have had, 
Mark Fidrich in 1976 had a 2-3-4 ERA. He mentioned Doc Gooden in 84. Fernando Valenzuela in 81. Hideo Nomo, even though he had several years in the Japanese leagues, he was a rookie in 95 with a 2.5 ERA, much like Jose Fernandez. It's impressive because of the velocity he has. You know, everybody loves to see a hard throw. It's impressive to see a guy line up the radar gun. Not everybody has that ability, but when you see a young guy at 21 like this, it, it gets you kind of excited to watch him pitch. I know I was excited to watch him today. Were you, Monty? Oh, he's got great stuff. I was looking forward to this game, and he has really lived up to the billing. Yeah, and I know the hitters weren't as thrilled as we were. Low pops it up, shallow left. It will be caught by Yelich and Butler back to first base. But I guarantee you, if you're a hitter and you're facing a guy like this and you go over for your buddies say, ah, no big deal. But if you get a kid hit off him, you're a hero. Yeah, no doubt. Our batter at college starters comparison. There's Fernandez numbers versus Bruce Chen's numbers, and both have excelled at, in their games. Yeah, that's one of the questions I always say is uh, it's not how, it's how many. These numbers are the same. You've just done it in different fashions. Location. Change of speeds. He's almost using his fastball as a change up in velocity. And he does here starting off Escobar with the fastball at 97. Escobar came in hot 14 hits and 29 at bats on this homestand but twice is grounded out once to first once to short. They've gone to the eighth inning in Tampa Bay and the Mariners are leading the Rays 5 4. That's good news for the Royals who are chasing them in the wild card. And the White Sox have just taken the lead over Detroit 3 to 1 in the fifth inning. The Tigers have lost 3 of 4 since that 12 game win streak. See, that's one thing I think with the Royals when they had that nine game winning streak they lost a game and they, they really kind of got things right back in order but you see teams a lot of times they'll win a bunch of games in a row they'll lose and then they kind of go in the tank and hopefully that's what the Tigers are into now. There's the base hit to left field Butler will stop at second. So Escobar now with a 10 game hitting streak. And George Kataris. Love to come through here. Okay, that's how you hit that fastball short to it. We've seen them, only three of them, but all three hits have been just real short swings. Really one of the few hittable balls he's left up in the strike zone that's for right. anyone to do anything with. So now it's time for George to be the hero. We know what George can do with his short, quick swing, especially if it's on the inner half. And with that hit, Escobar continues his streak. Good job. He's one hit shy, a one game hitting streak shy of his record at 11. Strike one. Fernandez has had some trouble on the road this year. See that breaking ball? That's a good hit right there. He's gone. Three and five on the road with a three nine four. So he has had some difficulties. Had not looked too like he's had too many problems tonight, though. No, he's looked very sharp tonight. I think one thing impressive when you have a young pitcher on the mound, his team doesn't score a lot of runs, so he's in very high leverage situations throughout most of his games. And he just seems so cool and confident on the mound. I read a quote he had. That said, I want to be the best, not second best, the best. And I think you want that kind of arrogance from your starting pitcher. Okay, you got to spread out the plate a little bit here. Anything close, you got to be hacking. Popped him up. Marisnik. 
will end the royal threat in the seventh inning. We head to the eighth. Bruce Chen with a marvelous evening. Seven shutout innings. Because Aaron Crow when we come back. Watching Avisael Garcia against his former team. Hits a triple, gets an error, and comes around to score. And so that's what gave them the three spot. Three to one over Max Scherzer in Detroit. Cleveland is beating Minnesota. Seattle won better than Tampa Bay, so that's good news for the Royals. Yankees all over Los Angeles. Vernon Wells blasting his old team. Milwaukee and Texas tied up at one. Houston and Oakland not yet underway. Our Mazda game break takes us to Tampa Bay where Ben Zobrist had a pair of home runs and that might usually be enough except for Brad Miller the shortstop for Seattle has a pair of home runs himself and the Mariners leading that one right now five to four in St. Petersburg. Thank you Joel. Our Chevy call to the bullpen is about Aaron Crow 35 strikeouts and 37 and a third innings. He has had a difficult time with first batters this year. And there is a ground ball hit sharply to Escobar. And he will get him. So he has been able to get the first batter 27 times in 46 opportunities. 19 have reached. And keeping that lead guy off so important in a nothing nothing game. Yeah, that's one of the harder things to do when you come in from the bullpen is try to get things going in a hurry. But one of the most important things to be able to do. Kristen Yelich has been on twice a single and a walk. He popped up facing Bruce Chen in the fifth. This is a little different going from 88 tops with the fastball to 96. Advantage Aaron Crow. Yep. Even with just two pitches and even though you know as a hitter he's got two. It's still hard to square him up when you have that kind of velocity. And he not only has a very high octane fastball, but a sharp breaking slider as well. Tried to throw it there, but his slider is the same velocity of some of Bruce Chen's fastballs. Yeah, here we're going to see that slider just kind of bottoms out, has a real nice depth to it where it goes from top to bottom of that strike zone. Jamie Carroll spins around. Does not have time as he had trouble with the baseball. So it will be an infield hit for Yelich. Well, he didn't have a grip. He got to his to his feet. Then when he went to throw it, Masada had a good grip on it. Good range. That, that bat exploded. Catches it here. Let's see again. Replay will show it. Didn't look like I mean looked like he had a grip on it. Yeah, well, double wonder, clutched. Yeah, wonder why he stopped. That'll be a base hit.
Now Ed Lucas 0 for 3. Yelich one steal. Ball one. Aaron is seven and two since June first with a one six one ERA and twenty five strikeouts and the seven wins lead all major league relievers. Rose would love to hand him an eighth. But he has fallen behind two and zero oh to Ed Lucas. OK a little slider right here puts him in the lane. That's what he wants to do. See the lefty getting loose. And that's a very welcome sign to see a reliever getting loose in the Marlins bullpen. Sure is. Two and one. That had some nice run to it. Yeah, you look at uh, Jose Fernandez's track record this year. I mean, his pitch efficiency has been great, but they haven't got let him go over 100 that often. He's had a lot of 87, 86, 82 pitch games when they lift him. And the last two starts, he has gone over 100. Two balls and two strikes. They've wanted to limit his innings and his pitches per game at such a young age. We saw them do that with Steven Strasburg in Washington. Felix Hernandez in Seattle. When he was in his first and second year. That's the one right there. That, that little slider going down there. You hit the top of it. One pitch, two outs. That's what he's hoping for. I think Jamie Carroll would love to have a little two hopper to him and redeem himself there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't understand why he didn't throw it. It looked like to me he had a grip. While the Royals are on the road, mark your calendar to come out to Casey's biggest and best party fans when the Kansas City Irish Fest slides into Crown Center Square over Labor Day weekend with special appearances by our own slugger. So fans get your tickets at KCIrishFest.com and also make sure to get the green Casey Shamrock T-shirt presented by the Irish Fest on September 17th at the K. Runner goes. Pitch swung on and missed. Guitars. Couldn't handle the baseball, so no throw. It is a stolen base, but the strikeout of Lucas. And now options for Crow. Do you walk a guy like Stanton to face a less experienced Logan Morrison? Well, I think Stanton's probably the guy on their roster you don't want to let beat you, so I think that may answer that question. We'll see you. This is a guy who averaged 35 home runs the last two seasons. Ned Yost though has said he doesn't like the intentional walk because he said so many times in the past it has come back to hurt him. And then there's the philosophy of Sparky Anderson who said I don't let Superman beat me. And Sparky said in the National League when he was the manager of the Reds Superman was San Francisco Giant Willie McCovey and when he was the manager of the Detroit Tigers Superman was the Royals George Brett. In there two and one Low slider Crow has a 307 average given up against righties with just one home. Might just stay with the slider. Went Ooh. after him with the heat upstairs, two and two. Nice. Well, that's an above average fastball, Monty. If you have that, you put that in the right spot like that. It's, it, it, best you get out of that's a foul ball. Well, I, I think he's got a great fastball to go along with a great slider. Not a many pitchers have two guys that they can go to like that, but certainly Aaron Crow does. Love the crowd here. He struck him out. 
Rex, earlier tonight you talked about Jose Fernandez cheese at the knees. This is what you're talking about from Aaron Crow. Got that right. Can't touch it. Got to go. Thoroughbred Ford for the best deals on new Ford cars and trucks. Visit thoroughbredford.com. The Royals, Fox Sports, and the state of Missouri are teaming up to help you stop smoking. For more information, call 1 800 Quit Now. Jose Fernandez, Chip Montgomery, we are delighted to see stay in that dugout. He don't look too sad. Well, they say he's got that kind of personality. Chevy call to the bullpen. Left-hander Mike Dunn. This is his 57th game this year and has a solid record. We told you they have really very few problems in their starting rotation and their bullpen. It has been their offense. But this young man still looks confident. He went seven, did his job. So did Bruce Chen for the Royals. Yep, this guy's going to go 91 to 95 with a four and two seam fastball. He's got a cutter in on righties. Change ups to righties as well. He's got a little slider he'll throw to a lefty. And he will face two straight lefties following Carroll and Dyson. And gets, and if anybody gets on, another lefty in Eric Hosmer. You see what Jamie has done this season against left handers. Very good, 326 average. Down the line. Jamie not known for his power. As a matter of fact, he and Chris Getz went for. A long stretch where they're going back and forth to see how many home runs they could hit in between a number of at bats. Getz had gone several years, and Jamie had done the same before going deep last year with the Twins, and then Getz went deep this year against Atlanta. Chris will hit third. In there, strike three call.
Sometimes when that breaking ball starts up so high, it freezes a hitter. He's saying there's no way that's going to come back over, especially if you haven't faced the guy before. And that's really not the finish that you want to have on the breaking ball. You don't want to be finishing up in the strike zone, but fortunately he got the call from home plate umpire. So Ned Yost will change up. He'll take Dyson out of the game and bring in Justin Maxwell. And Maxwell, who has had terrific numbers against left-handers in the past, you see his numbers as a career pinch hitter, and that's amazing, Rex, when you look at the power. Oh, tell you what, you got to love that. Be selective, but you're in there to pinch hit, not pinch walk. The second to final game of the road trip when the Royals went eight and one to Chicago, Minnesota, and New York at New City Field in the 12th inning. He hit a home run down the left field line that gave the Royals a 4 3 victory. Okay, let's watch Maxwell. And that was easy. Looked like that ball left the ballpark in two seconds. Looked like immediate dividends on that trade. It sure did. What a welcome. 2 0. Oh. It's got to come with a fastball. And he did, and it swung on and missed 2 and 1. Five career pinch hit home runs in an early young age like he is. Amazing. Make it six. Three and one. And Rex's first major league hit was a pinch hit grand slam home run. Unbelievable. That's so hard to do. Was that the walk off against Francisco Rodriguez? Yes. Wow, first hit. Perfectly located on the outside corner. It, it appeared that Maxwell was looking for the fastball and wasn't going to swing unless he got mm. just that. But you know what, though? That's a hittable pitch, too. It's up. Well, that's great pitching by Dunn. Strikes out the first two Royals he faces in the eighth inning. Yep, consecutive sliders. Greg Holland getting ready for the ninth. All one. The Royals have only one time in this game been able to get their speed guy on, and that was Alcides Escobar, but he didn't have a chance to steal because Billy Butler was at second base. So they have not gotten the Marlins into a situation where they had one of their fast runners at first threatening the pitcher. One and one. Tell you, Fernandez from the right side. And now Mike Dunn from the left side. Both really showing some electric pitches. Chris had a good rip. Kid Dunn was drafted by the Yankees as an outfielder. Another converted position player to a pitcher. It will roll foul and stay that way. So Chris will come back with a one-two count. So he looked like an athlete. He jumped off that mound. He had no trouble. 
The Marlins have four singles. The Royals have three singles. The Royals have 62 and 54. It's the first time they've been eight games over 500 in 10 years. September of 2003. They put together an amazing run winning 17 of 20 games and are 19 and 5 since the All Star break. Popped up foul territory. And the third baseman Polanco has room and Dunn does his job with a shutout eight. Cellular Field in Chicago. They call him Miggy Jr., or at least they did in Detroit. And now Avisael Garcia involved in that deadline trade, that three-way deal with the triple. And then there's an error. And he is going to come around. Oh, sloppy play there by the Tigers. That is what we call in Little League a home run. Guys, back to you. <laughs> Thank you, Joel. And the Royals certainly chasing in the wild card Baltimore, Tampa Bay, and Oakland, and they are chasing Detroit in the Central. Just six and a half games back. They have moved in front of Cleveland for second place. Justin Maxwell takes over in right field. That moves David Lowe to center field, and Greg Holland is on the mound. Comes in in the ninth inning of a scoreless ball game, and he has been flat brilliant this year. 74 strikeouts in only 46 innings. He's facing Logan Morrison. As a matter of fact, Greg's 14.48 strikeouts per nine. Trail only Cincinnati's Aroldis Chapman at 15.78 among major league pitchers with at least 40 innings. Yeah, Chapman. He throws the ball 100 miles an hour. Holland, he's close. We've seen him with some good high numbers this year. Yeah, I saw Chapman last night close went out with a 101 mile an hour fastball right. up. Morrison, Polanco, Solano here in the top of the ninth at the K. Barely missed inside. Beautifully thrown pitch. But Morrison couldn't do anything with it. Okay. Guitars wanting that target down low. That's his slider. He's got a split finger, too. A flare to center field, and it will drop just in front of Alex Gordon. So Logan Morrison with a blue base hit leads off the ninth. I 
And now a tough veteran out coming up in Polanco. Okay, that ball, you know, it's elevated. It's a little bit up, but he, you want to come in there and challenge him and that much they could do. Polanco has grounded out and flied out twice. Wants to bunt and take strike one. Uh, he's a veteran guy that can do that. Rex, if you are a pitcher and you know they're going to bunt, are you going to stay with the fastball? Yes. It's hard to bunt. It's hard to get down. Breaking balls, they're going down already. And a bunt's designed to hit the top half of the ball. So percentage-wise, you got a better chance to put the ball down with a breaking ball. Polanco has only dropped one successful sacrifice this year. He gets it down. Nicely done. Holland will go to first. Let's get the out. But I tell you, it's not easy to come in and bunt any time. But when you're facing a closer and trying to bunt him, that's a job well done right there by Polanco. So now Greg will face two young hitters in Donovan Solano and Adani Echevarria. Well, the one big number that this kid Solano has fits his position just right. He's got a 359 batting average with runners in scoring position. Did you have to bring it up? Leads the team. Ball one. He had a couple of hits last night and has been on once in this game with a walk. Robbed of a hit and a fine play by Jamie Carroll in the fourth and struck out against Chan in the seventh. Royals got some arms waiting in that outfield. If the, if the ball does get through the infielders, Maxwell got a good arm. So does David Lowe in center, although it's a little bit harder to throw runners out from center. Got that mound you got to throw over. And there's the best. Yep. Alex has 10 outfield assists this year. It's tied for first. In there. Right back in the count at two and two. Greg closed out a 4 3 win over Boston on Sunday, finishing with strikeouts of Will Middlebrooks and Jacoby Ellsbury. He's able to pick up his 32nd save and 25th in a row. Got him. Hey, George Katara said, you know, you're not getting out of there. I'm going to get you. That ball was well out of the strike zone, but you can tell an anxious hitter, you want to knock that run in. Swung way off the plate. Really good block by George, and then with the ball in the dirt, sprinted out to tag the batter, recording the strikeout. And now Echevarria, who has been a tough out, for opponents recently hitting 295 since the beginning of July. The Royals have made two nice plays on him to rob him of hits one by Chris Getz back to end the second inning. He flied out to left and Gordon made a nice running catch in left center in the fifth. To Escobar. 
Terrific job by Greg Holland after the leadoff single, and guess who's coming up? Eric Hosmer, Billy Butler, and Alex Gordon. our sprint question that we asked earlier what would be the toughest path to the playoffs and 68 uh, percent of our Royals fans said winning the American League Central the Tigers the American League champions lead the Royals by six and a half games last time we looked the Tigers were trailing 3 1 in the fifth to the White Sox and you see the Rays have lost and they were in front of Kansas City by four games at the start of this evening. Mike Dunn did a terrific job in the eighth inning. Now he must go through Hosmer, Butler, and Gordon. And you can hear that familiar chant roaring at the K. Yeah, they, they feel it. Bruce Springsteen would love it. Hosmer 329 average with three homers against the lefty. Two balls and no strikes. Hosmer has been so incredible in late inning pressure situations. 379. Six of his home runs. Half of his home runs have come seventh inning or later. Mm. Ooh, and that looked like it was ball three. Yeah, that's a good hard slider, though. He, he's been using that pitch against righties and lefties. With that velocity, it's hard to pick up. Those are the looks coming from fans of playoff bound teams. Exactly. Love it. Left center field. Yelich lost it for a moment in the lights, then adjusted to make the catch. That was a, a real nice pitch sequence there by Dunn. Stayed with that slider on the outer half. It was it was for a strike, but it was way out on the outer edge. All Hosmer could do was hit it off the end. Well, I wasn't sure if he would take out Dunn because Dunn had pitched so well. But Billy Butler is being protected now by a lefty and Alex Gordon. So they're going to bring a right hander on to face Billy Butler. And Billy, quite frankly, he's been hitting both very, very well. We'll be right back.
the rest of this season in stunning HD quality on MLB.tv. You can watch every out-of-market game live as well as choice of home and away broadcast live game DVR functionality, clickable line scores, and multi-game viewing options. So visit MLB.tv to order baseball everywhere. We're in the bottom of the ninth inning. Nothing, nothing game. Chad Qualls, the veteran, 34 years old, out of Harbor City, California, will face a veteran hitter and Billy Butler. Okay, Billy's faced him one time, didn't get a hit. Sinker. He's got a 90 to 94 mile an hour fastball. He's going to sink it. And Billy goes after the first pitch he sees and sends it down the right field oh. line. Foul. Just missed a double. All right, Qual Qualls, he's a veteran. He's in his ninth season. He's known for his location, spotting it, and that ball just foul by about two feet. And if he gets on, the Royals would likely pinch run Elliott Johnson for him. Yep, it's getting that time of the game. He's got a, a change up and a split finger he'll use. Three-quarter sign arm angle. The Royals have Moustakis, Perez, and Johnson still on their bench. Moose, though, down with that leg injury. He's day to day. They may shut him down tomorrow as well and get him ready for that Detroit series when the Royals hit the road. Butler swings and misses. Down in the count, one and two. Okay, really nice slider there by Qualls. Downward action. Not too flat. Whenever it's going down, it's tough to square up. Polanco throws out Butler to gone. So it is up to Alex Gordon, who has three walk-off hits this year for the Royals. Alex with two long fly balls off Fernandez, and he also struck out his last time up. Alex has never faced calls before. Look for something out over the plate you can drive. Alex has been clutch this year. 26 of his 61 RBIs have either tied the game or given the Royals the lead. Down in the count, 0 and 2. Hey, okay, Qualls uses that split finger. It's a good one. Goes straight down. And Alex chases it. He'll take off for first base, but Mathis is able to get the strikeout. And Qualls does a very good job in the ninth inning getting Butler and Gordon. We head to extra innings here at Kaufman Stadium. We'll see Herrera when we come back.
we go to the 10th. We've got a new battery. We will have Kelvin Herrera and Salvador Perez. And the reason that Ned Yost brings out Salvador just in case someone gets on, they don't want them stealing second base. So here is Herrera with a rather high earned run average. But if he locates his pitch as well, he can make a hitter's life miserable. That's right. He sure can. Good hard fastball. Change up. Curve. Royals are eight and two in extra innings this year. It will be Jake Marisnik, Jeff Mathis, and Kristen Yelich. Mike Redman has on his bench Pierre, Hobbs, Maggiano, and Hill. And Hobbs is the one guy they'd love to stay away from because he's a veteran who has been a very good pinch hitter in his career, Greg Dobbs. Strike one. Marisnik 0 for 3, excuse me, 1 for 3. He had that base hit in the fifth inning, but he also struck out in the third and the seventh against Chen. Bruce Chen went seven shutout innings. So did Jose Fernandez. So they were as advertised. Herrera has the edge 0 2. You know, if you've never faced Herrera before, you know what he throws. You still got to look for the fastball, and when you get two strikes, then you got to adjust to the changeup and, and the curve. Mainly changeups when he has two strikes on. Came right after him with the heater at 99 miles an hour. The Royals have used Crow. Who was, was terrific in the eighth inning, Holland in the ninth. Okay, there's that little breaking ball away. That's that's an effective pitch. Dave Island says that keeps the hitters off of his fastball. But at 99, when it's well placed, you're not going to touch it. He hit him. So with two strikes on the batter he hits Jake Marisnik and opens the door for the Marlins. Well, that ran in awfully hard. Just catches his jersey. Now we'll see Jeff Mathis in a sacrifice situation. Well he'll take that getting hit by a Herrera fastball. With no mark. Strike took, one. That jersey took that one for him. And for Kelvin, he's going, man, I had him down 0 2. An opportunity to get that first big out of the 10th inning, and then I brush his jersey. In there. Now Mathis down 0 2. And Herrera snaps at the baseball as it's returned to him. Love to finish him off right here or get a ground ball hit to an infielder. Just low at 98 miles an hour. Wow. That is a beautiful low strike. But wouldn't call. Well, on Fox tracked, it looked like it was strike three. I don't know how you missed that one. Mathis lives for another pitch. Oh, 
Runner goes, pitch taken, throw to second. And Marisnik will steal second base as Mathis strikes out. Marisnik, he got a nice jump over there. Salvador Perez's throw was short. Escobar with a nice dig, kept him from going in the outfield. Big pick. Look at how he stays with this. Ball bounces, stays with it, and then tries to apply the tag. Now, Getzi was doing a good job backing up, but that ball might have gotten to center fielder David Lowe. Would have been a tough error, but it wasn't. Eski saved it. In the first two games of this series, Kristen Yelich has been one of their toughest outs. He has two hits in this game, three in the series, and 18 in the month of August. A okay, center fielder low, very shallow. Alex, he's pretty, he's in a few steps than normal. And Yelich going that way with a lot of his hits. The Royals infield playing him straight up. Base hit right field. Maxwell will have no chance to get him. And the Marlins take a 1 0 lead. Way too good a jump at second base. Ball wasn't hit all that hard. Stayed right on it, but he hit it off the end. Okay, let's watch his jump. Quick. Got it. Hit the inside part of the bag there at third. It's the only run of the night. Yelich has a good lead. Does not go. First pitch to Lucas is swung on and missed. So that hit batter on an 0-2 count comes back to hurt the Royals. As Marik Mariznik takes first base, steals second, and Yelich knocks him home. Has him down, nothing in two. This Royals bullpen has been so solid, particularly on this homestand. That was just their second earned run that they have allowed on this homestand in 26 innings. Wow, that's, that's dominant. That's what that is. And, and you know what? They're only human. They're going to give one up once in a while. They will have low Escobar and Perez coming up in the bottom of the 10th inning. And very likely against Steve Ciszek, the closer for the Marlins. He struck him out. So Herrera must face Giancarlo Stanton. Who is one for four in this game. A single back in the fourth inning. That was off Chen. Only hitting 238. Rex told you how he missed a month of the season. Because of hamstring problems. But not too many National League teams have been pitching to this guy. They fear him so much. He's the one threat that they've had in their lineup this year offensively. He's got 85 strikeouts. So he can you can punch him out. 
power on power. This is a, an interesting thing. And there's a there's a nice pitch right on the outside corner. Power on power. Stanton down one ball two strikes. Marlins took the lead. Herrera hit the first batter who stole second base. He struck out Mathis. Yelich though singled in the run. Lucas struck out. He struck him out on a beautiful off speed pitch but. The Marlins took the lead one nothing. Low Escobar Perez coming up facing. Seashack. Hit a batter on an 0 2 count, just brushed his jersey. That man got on, stole second base, and scored on Christian Yelich's single. Yeah, that was a timely hit. And you know, sometimes when a pitcher makes an accident, it's usually a home run, but that was a, an accidental hit by pitch. And now the Royals must face a very difficult National League closer in Steve Shishek. Shishek. Yeah. Hit. Oh, he's a two and two mark Rex with a one six three ERA and has converted a season high 19 consecutive save opportunities in his last 27 games and offenses aren't doing a whole lot off of him. Just a two eighteen average righties are hitting two oh five with one home run lefties two thirty with two home runs. A little bit higher from the left side because he's a sidearm righty going to be coming into you can pick up the ball a lot easier. But he's funky. The fans are all on their feet. 90 to 92 sinking fastball. He's got a slider and a changeup. Fans hoping to see the 37th comeback by the Royals this year. David Lowe will start things. Hit sharply, but right at the second baseman who throws him out. So all you can do try to hit the ball hard and find a hole. Right handers only batting 205 against a guy who slings it from the side. He's tied with Kevin Gregg, Jim Johnson, and Craig Kimbrell for the second most saves in the majors dating back to June 8th. Who has the most? The Royals' Greg Holland. Escobar, that gives the Royals life in the 10th inning. There you go. 
Now with Escobar with a nice short quick swing. We'll see if he can get on that base and try to do something here. 14 for 14 in steals. And with C-Shek's leg kick, he might that might give him enough time to steal second base pretty easily. Let's we'll see what kind of move C-Shek has. Escobar does not go, and the pitch wanders outside. Salvador Perez does not run that way. And Salvi this year has hit into nine double plays. You, you, you can't try to roll it, roll it over. Now, Salvi's T-shirts were given away today. Popped up right side, Stanton. Racing over in foul territory. Makes a wonderful catch. Wow. Yeah, he, he had to run a long way for that. I didn't think he was going to get to it. Obviously, that hamstring is healed. It's the right approach. You can't try to pull him or you'll roll a little ground ball. So, Stanton to the rescue there. Two outs. Now, if he does go, Mathis, he has a pretty good percentage of throwing runners out, 37.5. He's, he's a pretty good catch and throw guy. Jamie Carroll has 44 hits this year, but Rex only six are extra base hits. So they'd love to get Escobar to second base. And Ciszek thinking that way as well, chasing Escobar back to the bag. That Esky... He definitely needs it to it to attempt to steal here. You got to get in the scoring position 14 for 14. That's good enough for me. And I'm Car sure Ned too. Carroll looking for his first base hit of the year for the Royals. He is 0 for 5. Be a lot easier for Jamie Carroll to knock him in from second than from first. And Rusty Koontz twice has gone over and whispered into Escobar's ear. Esky. He does not go, and the pitch is a strike. They chase him back. Be nice for Jamie Carroll's first hit in the Royals uniform to be a meaningful one. Escobar did not go, and the ball is grounded up the middle, and that will be the final out. The Marlins even this series at one win each. Yelich, the hero, knocks in the game-winning run in the 10th inning. And the Royals with the loss, unable to gain ground on Detroit or in the wild card. Yelich is our forward play of the game. Okay, Yelich got him a fastball out over the middle of the plate. Herrera wasn't able to keep it on the corners with him. Maxwell had no chance to throw him out. And this was an unbelievably well pitched game on both sides. Jose Fernandez and Bruce Chen did not get a decision, but each of them went seven innings of shutout baseball. We will look forward to tomorrow's afternoon matinee here at the K right after this. <laughs>